Hi, it's Dwyer. DwyerCrime.blog. Also, and it's important here, GamblersAdvisory.com. Let's talk about the Melanie McGuire case. There's a great movie right now. It's a Lifetime movie. It's on Hulu for Hulu subscribers. The name of it is Suitcase Killer, The Melanie McGuire Story. Let's talk about it, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let me just point out here, and it's very important here, if you're looking for bias, because this is a hotly contested case, that the murder victim, Melanie McGuire's husband, was a gambler, right? Part of her defense is that he was a guy who may have had gambling debts. He used to go to Atlantic City to gamble, right? And there's speculation that his dismembered body, brutal killing, found in luggage floating in the river and washed up on shore, may have been a professional hit involving a gambling debt, and this is speculative, a gambling debt he may have had. Right now, just understand that's part of her defense. I want people to fully understand that I embrace gambling. I myself am a gambler. I've been to Atlantic City. I've been to Reno. I have been to Las Vegas, right? I have, you know, understood the ethos of gamblers for a long time because I myself am a gambler who currently has some basketball bets outstanding as well as some NFL football bets outstanding, right? So just to understand, I'm from the gambler side of the aisle here. In reviewing this case, the contentions made by both parties. Now let's talk about this case. If you believe the prosecution, Melanie McGuire was having an affair with a married doctor. She thought this married doctor might be her future. Now, with her actual husband, the one who's a gambler. He had a career, but he also gambles recreationally. The one who's a gambler. Melanie and her husband, Bill, are buying a house together. They're in the process of closing on the house. But again, if you believe the prosecution, Melanie had other plans. The police would later seize a laptop from the family home, and on that laptop were searches about how to drug someone, how to kill someone. Here's what we know with certainty. She goes to Easton, Pennsylvania, which is not close to where they live in New Jersey, and she buys a gun days before her husband goes missing. Now, on the receipt where she has made the gun purchase is a charge for just a touch under $10. Only two things at the gun store match that price. One of them is wad cutter bullets. Right When her husband's body parts start to surface, they are the same caliber as the gun Melanie bought just days earlier. And of course, her husband's body has wad cutter bullets in the body. Right? Same caliber, 38 caliber with perhaps the same type of bullets that Melody bought. 
Now, the husband's body parts are found in luggage that belong to the family, floating in a nearby river. They are wrapped in garbage bags, the same type used by the family. Right? A bullet fragment on it has green fibers on it close to the same color as the family's green sofa. The prosecution believes they may have come from a pillow on that sofa that hasn't been found, that may have actually been used as a silencer in the commission of the murder. Right now, Here is a smoking gun. Understand, I don't consider any of what I've just said to be the smoking guns in the case. But I believe there are two smoking guns. Two that directly point to Melanie as having involvement in the murder. The first smoking gun is that a medical grade towel found with some of her husband's body parts matched those at the fertility clinic at which Melanie worked. In other words, there is a direct link here. Direct link between the husband's body parts and the medical grade towels at Melanie's place of employment. Now understand, the murder weapon has never been found. The 38 caliber gun. We aren't 100% certain that the wad cutter bullets are what Melanie spent, the $9.95 or so, that's listed on her gun receipt that she bought with the gun. The luggage could be explained. The defense wants you to believe that the couple had an argument that Bill decides he's going to leave Melanie, packs the luggage, packs his clothes into the family luggage and leaves with the family luggage. So the fact that his body is found in the family luggage might simply show that he took the luggage with him when he left. Now let's dig a little deeper and look at a problem that hypothesis presents. If Bill packed the luggage with his clothes before leaving the family residence, as the defense claims, then where are the clothes he packed? But understand, the luggage can be explained away. The garbage bags, the same type as in the family residence that Bill's body parts are found in, can be explained away because they're the same type. While we can look at the garbage bags and while we can say that they were manufactured around the same time as the bags Bill's body parts were found in. Because Melanie apparently gave some garbage bags to a family friend, and we know, doing sophisticated analysis, that the garbage bags were made at the same facility as the garbage bags in the family residence within a few hours of manufacture. 
But still, there's the possibility that there are other garbage bags that were made at the plant around the same time and that other consumers used the garbage bags. But I believe the medical gray towel is simply too much of a coincidence. You simply found with Bill's body parts. You simply can't claim that it's there by happenstance, right? If bad guys independently met Bill in Atlantic City after he supposedly left the family residence, why would they have medical grade towels used by Melanie at her workplace? Right, presumably if you believe the story that Bill packs up and leaves. A defense argument could be that Bill grabbed the medical gray towels when he packed up and left. Right? That's a possibility. But it's a remote possibility as I see it. Right? Just understand that there are medical gray towels. At least one found with Bill's body parts that appear to have originated from Melanie's place of employment. Now, let me point out something else. There's a second smoking gun. And it's even more powerful than the first for me. Bill's car is found near an Atlantic City casino. In the car is a prescription sedative, chlorohydrate. The doctor who prescribed the chlorohydrate was the doctor who was having an affair with Melanie. Here's the catch, and that doctor's name was Bradley Miller. Here's the catch. Bradley Miller claims he never wrote the prescription. The handwriting for the prescription appears to have been written by Melanie. Dr. Miller identified the writing as consistent with Melanie's handwriting. That would suggest that Melanie played a role in this prescription for a powerful sedative. This is the sedative that the prosecution wants you to believe five foot three inch Melanie used to drug her husband before killing him, right? It's found in the husband's car with two syringes. Let me also point out too that there's searches on the family computer. They had a two-year-old and a four-year-old. Then of course the two adults. It's possible that either adult could have done the search, Melanie or her husband. Let's just say it's far more likely that Melanie did the search on how to poison someone if she's the one responsible for the chlorohydrate prescription. Right? Again, the person who wrote the prescription or issued it is supposedly the doctor who Melanie was having an affair with. To me, that's a smoking gun. Let me also point out, the husband's car is found later at a Atlantic City casino, right, from where it's towed. Melanie admits 
that she drove the husband's car in Atlantic City after the husband supposedly walked out on the family. In other words, her version of the events has the husband in a huff packing the family luggage with his stuff and then leaving. Because he's a gambler, she assumed that he left to go to the casino, something I consider a leap of faith. Understand, they have two kids. Even if the husband is walking out on his wife, wouldn't he get a hotel room nearby? You don't just leave your kids. Right? Understand, too, the husband doesn't gamble for a living. He's actually a professional who teaches at a college. Right? The gambling is recreational gambling. It's secondary to his primary profession. So if a husband walks out on a wife and they have two toddlers, I believe the assumption should be he must be at the nearby Motel 6 or Holiday Inn, Red Roof Inn, whatever is nearby. Right? We had a blow up. He has walked out. He's going to find a bed to sleep in somewhere nearby. And then we'll figure this out later. Now, that would be my assumption. But because the husband likes to go to Atlantic City, we're to believe that the husband drives over an hour to get to Atlantic City immediately after leaving his wife. Now, Melanie wants you to believe that she then goes to Atlantic City to spite her husband. She drives down there. She's looking for his car. She finds the car, according to her version of events. And she moves the car. That's her story. To spite him. Right? She moves it to a different location. Here's the problem. What the prosecution calls human sawdust. Right? Skin fragments from Bill. It's found by the pedals in the car. Whoever moved the car that night had stepped in Bill's body parts before moving Bill's car in Atlantic City. That suggests Bill was dead when Melanie moved the car. Now it either suggests that or if you believe the defense it suggests that after Melanie, the night Bill goes missing, after Melanie goes to Atlantic City and moves his car and then gets out of the car, somebody else enters Bill's car and has parts of Bill under the soles of their feet. Right? I believe Melanie's admission that she is in Atlantic City behind the wheel of Bill's car, which of course is found with some of Bill's, we'll call it skin shavings by the accelerator is very damning for her. When you couple that with the two smoking guns, right, the towel from Melanie's workplace found with Bill's body parts, 
and the chlorohydrate, supposedly written, a prescription written by the doctor that Melanie is sleeping with, right? With handwriting that looks similar to Melanie's to the point where the doctor stated that that handwriting's consistent with Melanie's handwriting. Melanie looks guilty to me. But I need for people to focus for a moment here on the timeline. I believe Melanie was involved in the murder. I am just not sure if the evidence shows that she did this alone. I believe she had to have help. Now, let's go through the timeline here, because it's important. The prosecution's theory is that she drugged him, then shot him through a pillow, which has never been found. Now, let's freeze it right here. If that happened at the family residence, I'd like to know where the bullet is. On the Hulu TV show, he's on a sofa. And she puts the bullet over his head and shoots him through the pillow. You and I know that you can't predict, especially if you're a layperson, without a lot of experience in dealing with firearms, especially if, and let's follow the trail of the prosecution's theory, if you just bought the gun. In other words, you don't even have a lot of experience with the gun you have. If I shoot someone in my house, I have no way of knowing whether that bullet is going to travel into a wall. Understand, if the bullet lodged into a wall, whatever plans Melanie has of covering up the crime go out the window. Because any bullet hole in, you know, at the house, any bullet at the house would show that Bill was killed at the house, wouldn't it? Any plan to argue that he had a gambling problem and when he left the house, maybe he encountered some gamblers he owed money to, that would go out the window. In other words, the minute you shoot someone, you're all in. There's no going back. If that bullet ends up in the wall, if you find the bullet in the wall and take the bullet out so they can't track that bullet back to the gun that killed Bill, you're going to need wall repair. Right? My question is a simple one. Where was Bill shot? Do we even know whether Bill was shot at the house? Right now, understand, too, the timing. The car in Atlantic City, if it has human sawdust in it, right, brought there from under the foot of the person who drove it, and we know Melanie was down there and claimed she drove it that night. Right? What I want people to think about is a couple of things. That would mean that Bill would have to have been dismembered before his car gets to Atlantic City. In other words, you would have to believe, contrary to the show on Hulu, 
you would have to believe that Melanie kills and dismembers Bill before she drives the car down to Atlantic City. Right now, the house as the crime scene has problems, if you believe that scenario. Where is the human sawdust at the family residence? Right now, these are important questions to ask. I believe she's involved in the murder. The question is in what capacity? Also, what was she convicted of? Isn't she supposed to have been the person who did the murder? She's not convicted of conspiracy. The prosecution hasn't located anyone who's supposed to have conspired with Melanie to kill her husband. So the devil here is in the details. What are the logistics of this murder? So there's human sawdust in Bill's car. Where's the human sawdust at Bill's home? Understand, too, he's supposed to be dismembered. What did Melanie use? Where's the chainsaw or the saw in general that Melanie used? When the police go through the house, where's the blood? Right? There's no bullet. There's no blood. There's no human sawdust. Let's talk about another problem. Now, I don't know this. Perhaps you do. In the comment section of this video, please, if I'm missing facts that you feel are highly relevant, share them with me and the subscribers here. I don't know Bill McGuire's weight. If he weighed 180 pounds, there are three pieces of luggage. Three. On average, on average, each would weigh 60 pounds. Melanie is 5'3". Right? Five foot three inches tall. Wouldn't it be a challenge for her to cut up Bill, pack his body into the, you know, luggage, and then to move that luggage to her car to have those three pieces of luggage in her car to then go over a bridge, then to take out the pieces and then to lift them up over the side of the bridge. Don't you have the same problem here that you have in the Wayne Williams alleged murder of Nathaniel Cater in the um, Atlanta child murder mystery? Right? Not that Cater was a child, but the argument is Wayne Williams might have been too small to throw the alleged murder victim off the bridge. Isn't that amplified here? She's 5'3". If hubby weighed 180, each piece of luggage would weigh 60 pounds. If hubby weighed 210, each piece of luggage would weigh 70 pounds. Now, I don't know about you, but I fly Southwest. And when I go to the airport, I have a hard time dealing with 50 pound luggage. Right, the luggage will feel heavy for me and I know it's 50 
because I've had issues when traveling where I've been there and the Southwest person says, hey, you need to lose two pounds. And I'm barely able to swing my luggage around. Right? Understand, 60 pounds, 5'3 woman. Just ask yourself, is she handling Bill's body parts by herself? Also, how many shows have you watched, crime shows, where a location looks pristine? Right? Someone's been shot. The cops get to the murder spot. It looks pristine until, of course, the cops take out luminol and other forensic tools. And then you notice what looked pristine has been wiped down. Right, folks? Where is the lit up luminol at the family residence here? Right? Don't you have here a problem where the prosecution's theory, and it's in the Lifetime movie, which is on Hulu right now, the prosecution's theory is that she kills him at the house. Right, folks, the house doesn't have the evidence you would expect. Right? Understand, too, if you believe the folklore, the police, in a different case, show up at Scott Peterson's house and they smell bleach. Right, folks? I don't believe here there are allegations that the police showed up at Melanie's house and smelled things like bleach that would indicate obvious signs of a cover-up. Well, we know the murder had to take place before Bill's car gets to Atlantic City because parts of Bill are in Bill's car, right? The human sawdust the prosecution referred to, right? If driving Bill's car to Atlantic City is one of the last acts done in furtherance of this crime, don't you have a problem here with where the murder took place? Now, I'm someone who believes she had a role in the crime. Here's the problem if you're a juror. If the prosecution is telling you that he was killed at the family residence, where's the evidence of that? No bullet, no hole in the wall. He's supposed to be dismembered, folks. There should be signs of blood everywhere. Where are they? If you're supposed to find someone guilty beyond a reasonable doubt, and again, I think she's involved in the crime, can you reach that conclusion without knowing where the crime was committed or without evidence to support the prosecution's claim? of where the crime was committed. This is a very troubling case. I believe the prosecution has smoking guns. Write the prescription filled by the guy she's sleeping with. Right, the problem here though is you don't quite know how the crime was pulled off and how the cleanup was pulled off. It seems to me that five foot three Melanie must have had help. Right in the prosecution's closing, according to the Hulu show, we are to believe that the prosecution made the claim that Melanie after dropping the car off in Atlantic City, then spends two days, two days, 
dismembering the body. Right? How's that possible when there's human sawdust in the car? If the closing has you wondering about the sequence of events, can you trust it? Right? So, let's just say, this is a troubling case. It's extremely troubling. Right? Certainly, Melanie did things that raise questions. Buying the gun days before her husband goes missing. Going to Atlantic City with the certainty that the husband's there. Right after he has packed his clothes into the family luggage and left the house. Right? To me, that's questionable. Right? Her claim of domestic violence, understand, she claims the husband was physical with her, is baffling because she's seeing a doctor. Right? The doctor wasn't able to tell police about seeing any marks on her. Also, it takes planning and effort to write a fake prescription. Right? That takes planning and effort. Where she made a mistake was she plants it in his car. That was a dumb move. Right? By the way, of course, the prescription, the drug, is found in Bill's body when his body parts are discovered. So let me offer an alternative take. Right? There are parts of this murder that look professional. I get the feeling that somewhere along the line, after Bill is shot to death, his body is taken out of the family residence. I believe the dismemberment takes place elsewhere because I just don't believe that someone who isn't thinking enough to clean the soles of their feet before driving Bill's car would have the wherewithal to thoroughly clean up the family residence.